ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار just one week has passed since the end of the hajj and the pilgrims now many of them have left the mashair and returned all the way back home this hajj that is performed every year in which the muslims both in mecca and outside mecca remind themselves of the rites and the rituals of that great prophet ibrahim alayhi salam that great prophet that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described by saying, Inna Ibrahim kana ummatan, that Ibrahim was verily a nation. And one of the interpretations of this is that the scholars, they say that the same number of virtues you would find in a whole group of people, in a whole nation of people, that this one is generous, and this one is kind, and this one is hospitable, and this one is brave, and this one is wise. So the virtues that it would take a whole nation to put together, Ibrahim السلام, had all of these virtues in himself, by himself. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna Ibrahim kana ummatan qanitan lillahi hanifan wa lam yakum minal mushrikeen. Verily Ibrahim had a nation's worth of virtues. He was obedient and submissive to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and was not from those who made shirk. And likewise, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَقَدْ آتَيْنَا إِبْرَاهِيمَ رُشْدَهُ مِنْ قَبْلِ وَكُنَّا بِهِ عَالِمِينَ That we gave Ibrahim guidance when he was a young man, before, and we were well aware of his affairs. And likewise, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِذِ بَتَلَى إِبْرَاهِيمَ رَبُّهُ بِكَلِمَاتٍ فَأَتَمَّهُنْ That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tested Ibrahim with certain commands. Tested him again and again. But every time he was given a command, he completed it. Every time he was given a test by Allah, he passed it. So then what did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give him as a result? I'm going to make you an imam for all of mankind. That all of humanity will look upon you as a leader. So what were these tests that Ibrahim alayhi salam was given? And what can we learn from them? The first test that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave Ibrahim was the test of calling his family to Islam. The test that many of us also have to endure, to call our families, even though they may be Muslim, but perhaps they are not practicing Islam in the right way. Perhaps they are not serious about the religion in the right way. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shows us and gives us a role model in Ibrahim in terms of how he called his family to Islam. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَذْكُرْ فِي الْكِتَابِ إِبْرَاهِيمِ And remember Ibrahim in the book. إِنَّهُ كَانَ صَدِّيقًا نَبِيًّا He was a man full of truth, صَدِّيق, Nabiya and a prophet. إِذْ قَالَ لِأَبِيهِ يَا أَبَتِي When he said to his father, يَا أَبَتِي And you know in Arabic, when you say أَبَتِي, this is different from saying يَا أَبِي, يَا وَالِدِي He didn't just say, oh my father. But abati, it implies shafiqa, rahma, compassion, mercy. He's saying, oh my dear father, oh my beloved father, with love. He's saying, ya abati, lima ta'abudu, ma la yasma'u, 
وَلَا يُبْصِرُ وَلَا يُغْنِ عَنْكَ شَيْئًا Why do you worship these idols? These things that cannot hear and they cannot see and they can't benefit you at all. يَا أَبَتِي إِنِّي قَدْ جَاءَنِي مِنَ الْعِلْمِ مَا لَمْ يَأْتِكَ He said, Oh my father, some knowledge has come to you, has come to me, which has not come to you. He didn't say, I'm a prophet and you're, you're ignorant. I'm guided and you're misguided. He didn't speak like this. He's saying, I have some knowledge and you have some knowledge. I know some things and you know some things. But there is some knowledge that has come to me, which hasn't come to you yet. So then follow me. And I will guide you to the straight way. With this knowledge, I will show you the straight path. And then he said, Ya Abati, La ta'abud shaytan Inna shaytan kana lil-Rahmani asiyya. He said, Oh my father, don't worship shaytan. In other words, by worshiping these idols, you're obeying shaytan, so it's as if you are worshiping him. Verily, shaytan was disobedient to ar-Rahman. Ya Abati, Inni, inni akhafu an yamassaka athabu min ar-Rahmani fatakuna lil-shaytani waliyya. He said, Oh my dear father, I am worried I fear that a punishment will come to you from who? From Ar-Rahman, the one who is so merciful, the one whose mercy triumphs over his anger. And yet I am worried that even this one who is so merciful, he will punish you because of this shirk. فَتَكُونَ لِلشَّيْطَانِ وَلِيَّ And then you will be an ally of shaitan, meaning you will both be in the same place, in the hellfire. So he's calling his father in the most gentle way, in the most loving way, saying, leave this shirk. Leave this idolatry and come back to the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But how did his father respond? Are you turning away from my idols, Ya Ibrahim? Are you turning away from my gods? If you don't stop with this calling to your religion, you don't stop talking about this stuff, I will stone you. And go away from me. Flee from me. Make hijrah from me. So he called his father with such love and his father responded with such harshness. Harshness. So how did Ibrahim respond? He said, peace be upon you. Peace be upon you. He wasn't harsh back to his father. Not like many of us. We try to teach our families. We try to say something to our families. If they respond badly, we respond even worse. No. This is not the way. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls us and tells us, no, respond with in the most beautiful way. So he said, I will make istighfar for you. I will ask Allah's forgiveness for you. And he is gracious to me. So Ibrahim alayhi salam, he called his father again and again, but his father did not respond to the call. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tested him again. This time by having him call all of his people to Islam. So Ibrahim called to his people. When he said to his people, what do you worship? It is, a, is it a lie that you make up these idols and you say they are partners besides Allah? Is this lie what you want besides Allah? فَمَا ذَنُّكُمْ بِرَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ So what do you think about Allah, the Lord of the universe? Why do you worship these idols and you forget about Allah who is the Lord of everything? But when he saw that his people were not responding to his words, when he saw that they were not answering his call, Ibrahim alayhi salam, he decided to take a different tactic. Because even in English we say, actions speak louder than words. So Ibrahim decided to teach them by his actions rather than just mere talk. So he made his plan. And so when the people went out for their festival, they went out of the city. He said, I'm not feeling well. I'm sick. So they left him behind. So they turned around and they left him. So he is now alone in the city. So then he went to the temple where all the idols were placed. And the people had put food out in front of the idols as an offering. So he said, well, don't you eat? Don't you want to eat this food? Mocking these idols. He knows they can't eat, but to mock them. What's wrong with you that you don't speak? 
فَرَاغَ عَلَيْهِمْ ضَرْبًا بِالْيَمِينَ So then he started to smash the idols with the axe. فَجَعَلَهُمْ جُذَاذًا إِلَّا كَبِيرًا لَهُمْ لَعَلَّهُمْ إِلَيْهِ يَرْجِعُونَ Except the biggest one, the biggest idol, and he smashed all the others. جَعَلَهُمْ جُذَاذًا He made it to pieces. And he smashed them up until they were pieces. Then he took the axe and he put it on the shoulder of the big one. And then he went away. So when the people returned and they found all their idols shattered in pieces, they said, قَالُوا مَنْ فَعَلَ هَذَا بِآلِهَتِنَا إِنَّهُ لَمِنَ الظَّالِمِينَ They said, who has done this to our gods? Verily, he is an evil person. So some of the people, they said, قَالُوا سَمِعْنَا فَتًا يَذْكُرُهُمْ يُقَالُوا لَهُ إِبْرَاهِيمُ They said, we heard a young man talking about these idols. They call him Ibrahim. They said, قَالُوا فَأْتُوا بِهِ عَلَىٰ أَعْيُنِ النَّاسِ لَعَلَّهُمْ يَشْهَدُونَ They said, bring him here in front of all the people so we can have a trial and people will see how we will treat this person. So when Ibrahim came, قَالُوا أَأَنْتَ فَعَلْتَ هَذَا بِآلِهَتِنَا يَا إِبْرَاهِيمُ They said, are you the one who did this to our gods, Ya Ibrahim? قَالَ بَلْ فَعَلَهُ كَبِيرُهُمْ هَذَا فَاسْأَلُوهُمْ إِنْ كَانُوا يَنْطِقُونَ He said, no, it's the big one who did it. Look, he's got the axe, not me. Why are you asking me when he's the one with the weapon? Ask these idols, ask the victims if they can speak. فَرَجَعُوا إِلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ So then they looked at each other. Now they understood. Ibrahim's point was made that these idols, if they cannot help themselves, how can they help you? But in the end, they refused to submit. قَالَ أَتَعْبُدُونَ مَا تَنْحِتُونَ Do you worship that which you yourselves make? وَاللَّهُ خَلَقَكُمْ And Allah is the one who made you. You worship these things that you made. But Allah is the one who created you and made you. وَمَا تَعْمَلُونَ And what you do. But in the end, they had no choice. Their arrogance made them refuse to submit. So what did they do? قَالُوا بَنُوا لَهُ بُنْيَانًا فَأَلْقُوهُ فِي الْجَحِيمِ They said, make a big structure. We're going to make a big bonfire. فَأَلْقُوهُ فِي الْجَحِيمِ And we will throw him and burn him alive. And show the people, this is what happens if you do such a crime. So they spent weeks making this structure. This huge structure to set alight. And then finally they set it on fire. And the fire was so intense and so hot that the birds could not fly over it. And they couldn't even come close to throw Ibrahim into the fire. So in the end they had to make a catapult. You know the catapult? So they built a catapult. And then they tied Ibrahim and they put him in the catapult to shoot him into the fire. And when they placed him in the catapult, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tested Ibrahim yet again. This time he's seeing certain death in front of him. Death, the most painful death in front of him. And what is Ibrahim saying? He said, حَسْبُنَ اللَّهُ وَنِعْمَ الْوَكِيلُ Allah is enough for us. And he is the best planner. He is the best disposer of affairs. So they shot him into the fire. When he landed, they were waiting, listening. Let's hear the screams now of this criminal. Let's hear him being punished. But they didn't hear anything. So they looked to see what's happening to this man. Is he being punished or not? And when they look inside, they see Ibrahim sitting as comfortable as he can be. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made his own plan. قُلْنَا يَا نَارُ كُونِي بَرْدًا وَسَلَامًا عَلَىٰ Ibrahim. Allah commanded the fire be cool and comfortable for Ibrahim. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved Ibrahim. And he was protected in this fire. And this was another miracle for the people. And yet they refused to believe. So in the end, they had no choice but to chase him out. They said, leave our town. We don't want you here anymore. Leave this place. Ibrahim alayhi salam, he was in Iraq, in Canaan. They said, leave Canaan, leave our land. And so Ibrahim had to go into exile. And this was yet another test that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave Ibrahim. That he was now a refugee, chased out of his home. وَقَالَ إِنِّي ذَاهِبٌ إِلَىٰ رَبِّي سَيَهْدِينَ He said, I'm going to my Lord. He will guide me. He will show me where to go. So they chased Ibrahim and his wife Sarah out of the town. And he went to Asham. And then he went to, later on to Egypt. And then he returned back to Asham. And those of us who have come from other countries who have left our homes, left our families, left our friends behind, we know how difficult it is to be a stranger in a strange land. And yet Ibrahim السلام, bore all of this patiently, content with the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tested Ibrahim again. This time, by not answering his dua, 
Ibrahim kept making dua to Allah saying, Rabbi habali min as Oh Allah, grant me righteous offspring. Grant me and my wife children that we can raise to worship you. That we can have them grow up and we teach them to worship you and to love you. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his plan was to withhold this dua. So Ibrahim kept making dua and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala kept delaying the response. He was 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. And still Allah would not answer his dua until finally the historians say he was 86 years old. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him the glad tidings of Ismail. Finally, we gave him glad tidings of a forbearing son. And later on, he was 99 years old when he would have his second son, Ishaq. And in this is a lesson for all of us, those who are making dua, whether it's for children or whether it's to find a job or whatever it may be. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not answering it the time that you want, don't give up hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah will answer the dua one way or the other. According to his timetable, not always according to our timetable. But human beings, we are hasty. We're always in a hurry. We make dua and we want it right away. And if it's delayed one day, two days, three days, we say, oh Allah, why, why? That's not for us to say why. We keep making the dua and we are confident that if Allah answered Ibrahim's dua, Allah will answer our dua. And we hope that it's sooner than before we're 86 years old. But even if it comes then, we are sure that Allah will answer our dua. Until finally when he did get the glad tidings of this son. Now finally he has a baby. Finally he has a young boy that he can raise. What does Allah command him to do? He says take this young boy. And take his mother. And leave them in the desert. And yet Ibrahim a.s. he did not question. He did not refuse. Always he submitted to the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he packed his provisions. And he took Hajar and Ismail and he went from Asham all the way into the valley, this valley between the mountains, this place that would eventually be Mecca. At this time there was nothing, it was just an empty valley. But he took Ismail and his mother and he uh, left them there and he gave them a bag of water and some dates. And then he turned around and he started walking back to Asham. So when Hajar realized that Ibrahim is going away, that he's leaving them there, she ran behind him and she said, Ya Ibrahim, who are you leaving us to? Who are you leaving us to in this valley where there is nothing and no one? There's nothing even growing in this place. And Ibrahim salam, was quiet until finally when Hajar understood, she said, Allahu amaraka bihada. Is it Allah who ordered you with this? Ibrahim, he said, yes. So Hajar, she said, then Allah will not abandon us. Allah will not let us go. And so she went back to the baby and Ibrahim kept on in his journey until finally when he was out of sight, as was his way, he returned back to Allah and made dua. And he raised his hands and said, Rabbana inni askantu min dhurriyati biwadin ghayri dhi zara inda baytik al-muharram. He said, oh Allah, I have left some of my progeny, some of my descendants in a valley where there is nothing growing. فَجَعَلْ أَفْئِدَةً مِنَ النَّاسِ تَهْوِي إِلَيْهِمْ so make the hearts of some people inclined towards, towards them. O Allah, provide someone to look after them and provide for them some fruits. So that they may give thanks. And then Ibrahim, he continued his journey. He left their affair to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Hajar, she stayed with the baby until finally the dates and the water after some time was exhausted. Then the baby started to cry because it wanted the milk. But Hajar, she had no much, no water. So she was dehydrated, so she could produce no milk. And the baby kept crying and crying and she didn't know what to do. So she quickly went near a, on a nearby mountain, Mount Safa. And she scanned the horizon looking for anything, food, water, anything. She saw nothing. And then she quickly ran down to the next mountain, Mount, uh, Mount Marwa, and did the same and saw nothing. Then she went back to As Safa and again ascended the mountain. And she did this seven times. The Prophet wasallam he said, and from this is the sa'i of the pilgrims in Hajj and Umrah to commemorate and remember the sacrifice of this righteous woman. Until finally when she was on Mount Marwa, she saw a figure in the distance near the baby. So she quickly ran back to her baby and she found it was an angel standing there and he was digging the ground with his heel, 
with his foot and water was starting to come out of the ground. So she quickly took the water skin and she started to fill the bag with the water. And then the angel, Jibreel, he said, لا تخافي الضيعة Don't fear being abandoned. Because this child and his father will build Allah's house at this spot. وَإِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُضَيُّعَ أَهْلَهُ And verily Allah does not abandon his people. Allah does not abandon his people. Those who seek to obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah always comes to their rescue. He always comes to their aid. He never leaves them alone. And then the angel that disappeared. So Hajj now she had the water coming from this spring. And this is the spring that we know as the spring of Zamzam. Which to this day is giving the pilgrims and everyone else water. After some time there was a caravan of Arabs traveling from Yemen. And they were passing by. And they saw the birds flying over the spot where the water was. So they said the birds don't fly except where there is water. So they sent their scouts to the place. When the scouts came, they found the water and they found Hajj and Ismail. They said, can we use the water? She said, you can use the water, but you don't have rights to it. So then they made an agreement that their people will use the water. They will share the water with Hajar and they will adopt her and give her and her child shelter and food. So this tribe, they settled in this place and they adopted Hajar and Ismail. And this was begin the beginning of the town that we know as Mecca today. Ibrahim, alayhi salam, he would visit Hajj and Ismail from time to time to check up on them because he loved Ismail so much. And yet the greatest test that Ibrahim was going to face was yet to come. أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم فاستغفروا من كل ذنب إنه ربي غفور رحيم. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين أما بعد on one of these visits the scholars they say Ismail was some say 13 some say 11 some say he was 7 Ibrahim he came to his son and he said يا بني again he is speaking with شفقة this time as the father speaking to his son he didn't say, Ya Ibni, Ya Waladi. He said, Ya Bunaya, Oh my dear son, Oh my beloved son, Inni araf al manami, Anni adbahuka, Fanzur madha tara. He said, Oh my son, I have, I've had a dream. And in my dream, I have seen that I am sacrificing you, slaughtering you. So what do you think about this dream? And you know, the dreams of the prophets, they are revelation. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives the revelation. One of the ways he gives it to the prophets is through their dreams. So Ibrahim knew this was a command from Allah. And yet he is still consulting his son. What do you think we should, we should do? And what did his son say? Qala ya abati. Again with shafaqa. Oh my dear father. Qala ya abati. If'al ma tu'mar. Do what you are commanded. Do what you are commanded. Whatever the command is. Satajiduni. Insha'Allah min al-sabirin. And you will find me from amongst those who are patient. So Ibrahim, he went and he started making the preparations. And he started sharpening the knife. And he got together the things that he needed. فَلَمَّا أَسْلَمَا وَتَلَّهُ لِلْجَبِينَ And then he took, Ibra he took Ismail. And he laid him so that his, he was on his forehead. His face was away. Ibn Abbas, he said that Ibrahim turned the face of Ismail so that there would be no way, no emotion, no sentiment to turn him away from obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he turned him on his forehead so he couldn't see his face. And then he took the knife. He said, Bismillah, Allahu Akbar. And he went across the throat. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made the knife not to cut. Allah made this knife not possible to cut the throat of Ismail. And then a voice called out, Oh Ibrahim, You have fulfilled your dream. You have fulfilled the dream. And that's how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rescues the righteous. Those who are sincere to Allah. Those who seek to perfect their good deeds. When they are tested by Allah, Allah comes to their aid and rescues them. إِنَّ كَذَلِكَ نَجِزِ الْمُحْسِنِينَ إِنَّ هَذَا لَهُ الْبَلَاءُ الْمُبِينَ Verily, this was a great test, a huge test 
Someone could say, why would Allah give such a test? Why would Allah tell Ibrahim to sacrifice his son? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't want for Ibrahim to kill his son. He didn't want Ibrahim to become a murderer. But Allah wanted to raise Ibrahim to a status that no one before him had ever reached. That he would be the Khalil of Allah. Khalil in Arabic it means the one who loves someone so much that the love of that one is mixed with the person's soul. You cannot separate the love from that person's heart. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to remove any rival, anyone who could compete with the love of Allah in Ibrahim's heart. He wanted to purify Ibrahim's heart so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the love for him comes above anything or anyone else. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent for a ram to be brought instead and Ibrahim sacrificed the ram instead in place of Ismail. And this is the reason that the pilgrims in Hajj and all throughout the world, we make our sacrifices, our udhiya, our qurbani, to remember the sacrifice of Ibrahim and Ismail salam. Once a man came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he said, Ya khayr al -biriya. He said, Oh, you who are the best of creation. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Thaka Ibrahim. That was Ibrahim alayhi salam. No doubt our Prophet was the best of creation. But out of his humility, he wanted to also remind us that don't forget about that other Prophet. That other Prophet who achieved the station of Khalilullah. That other great Prophet that no matter what test Allah gave him, he passed it with flying colors. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us to be from those who follow the way of Ibrahim and Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Inna Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala nabi ya ayu alladhina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima. Allahumma salli wa sallam wa barak ala nabina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa ashabi ajma'in. Allahumma izz al-Islam wal-Muslimin. Allahumma izz al-Islam wal-Muslimin. اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين ودمر أعداء الدين وانصر عبادك الموحدين وربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار آمين وآخر دعوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين قيم الصلاة